everyone, and welcome to the Maroon Strong Show in a brand new year. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. Tori is on an assignment and will be back next episode. Over the holidays, the Asheville Citizens Time released their all-Western North Carolina teams for the fall sports season. We had several Maroon Devils recognized. Our own Jordan Cody was named to the first team all-Western North Carolina football team as a special teams player. Jordan had an outstanding year, returning 16 punts for 368 yards and four touchdowns, along with 26 kickoffs for 584 yards and a touchdown. He also accounted for 2,042 all-purpose yards. Joining Jordan were 12 more fall athletes who are recognized as honorable mention all-Western North Carolina. Those were Taylor Orris, Spencer McCoy, Kobe Toynita, Kanan Sellers, Angel Bowers, and Ross Inslee for football. For cross country, Parker Chatham, Emma Pinder, Shelby Hyatt, and for volleyball, Lydia Sell, Alyssa Robinson, and Carrie Jones. Our congratulations to all of those folks. In our Christmas report, we told you of James Phillips being named principal at West Elementary School. Phillips' departure from the high school left a job to be filled. Swan County Schools wasted no time in finding a replacement from within the school system as they named Evan Clapsaddle and Sonia Blankenship both as assistant principals. Clapsaddle will handle the student management and discipline, while Blankenship will help with teacher evaluations and classroom instructions. Congratulations to the both of them. At the high school, Dawn Gilchrist Senior Honors English class recently participated in an amazing learning experience. Students from Ms. Gilchrist's class did a writing assignment with high school students from Newtown, Connecticut via email and live streaming. Our own Joe Holt caught up with the class during the actual story exchange. Here's what Joe has for us. The background for Narrative 4 is that it is an organization uh, that attempts to create compassion where there is none through having disparate groups of people tell their stories. And the way that it works is um, it started off with a group of writers who were meeting in Colorado, National Book Award winner Colin McCann, uh, various writers who have published a great deal, they told their stories to each other and then it was retold in first person. And by retelling it in first person, you become the, the person whose story you're telling, you embody that story. And that is how the compassion is created. It's to create compassion and understanding. It sounds a little bit nebulous, but it actually is, it, it, it works, it's pretty neat. So they've been doing that for about two years, uh, working with each other and then they decided to branch out and they decided to have uh, students work together and tell their stories to one another. So Lee Keelock, who, who taught at Newtown High School uh, the year of the shooting at um, the elementary school, felt like everything he taught his classes was grim and he didn't want to teach literature that was grim to kids who had suffered so much. So he contacted the writer Colin McCann and said, would you mind donating some of your books because I think that my students would find them uplifting. Colin McCann was involved with Narrative 4. Not only did he donate his books, he said, I would like to work with you and your students to do a story exchange. So they set up a story exchange between those students and students in Chicago at an inner city school. That was one of the earliest uh, student exchanges. And it has grown from there to students in Haiti, students in New Orleans, students in South Africa, students in Ireland, and now students here in Bryson City. And the way I got involved was that the writer Ron Rash at WCU has known me for a long time and knows that I write, and he knew that I had my students write, and he's also uh, read to my students from his own work. He asked if I thought my students would want to be involved with Narrative 4 because he was involved with them. And I said I thought it would be wonderful. And so they um, paid for me to go up to Yale last spring for their first Narrative 4 summit. And in that summit, students came from all over the world, writers came from all over the world, and we did a story exchange where I was paired with another writer and he told me his story about growing up in Germany, and I told him my story about growing up in the Southern Appalachian Mountains. 
and then we each told our story to a group as if we were the other person. And so that is, that is how I came to understand what Narrative 4 does. And I've been working with uh, Lee Keylock, who, who was the former teacher from Newtown, and now he's the director of Narrative 4. I've been working with him since last fall, and he helped engineer this story exchange and Joanna Diaz, a teacher there and a student there, Sophia DeVivo, have worked with me and my students in setting up this exchange that just took place today. My name is Amanda and this is my story about how I decided that I wanted to become an English teacher. Uh, for the longest time, I thought I was going to be a baker or a chef because I loved doing that kind of thing. I loved cooking and bake, making things. Um, but then later on, my boyfriend got cancer and I decided that I wanted to be a biologist and I wanted to find the cure for cancer. So one day I talked to my grandmother on the phone and she decided and she said, why not be a teacher? Teach people how to tell stories. Teach people how to do the things that you love. And that's how I decided that I'd like to be an English teacher. We will continue to do this until all 21 of my advanced placement students have told their story and the students with whom they are paired in Newtown have told theirs. And so it is to create understanding and, you know, it sounds like a cliche, but it is to allow them to walk in someone else's shoe through embodying someone else's stories. So that's what we're doing. And then in the spring we plan to do the same thing with students in Ireland. And we could not have done it without the tech people here, that's for sure. So. That's it. That's how we came to be involved. That's what Narrative 4 is. It's really about creating understanding and compassion. On the sports scene for basketball, the Maroon Devils are now 4-7 on the season, while the Lady Devils are 1-10 in varsity action. This Friday, the Devils will host Cherokee, who will bring to town the number one ranked women's 1A team in the state, along with an undefeated boys team. We should have a very large crowd for this whole set of games, which will start at four as our own Tory Treadway and the Junior Varsity Lady Devils start things off. Best of luck, Tory. After the games against Cherokee, we have a full slate of games against East Henderson on Saturday, starting at 2.30, and then back at home again on Tuesday to play Hayesville. That is going to wrap things up for this episode. Tory will rejoin us next week when we bring you another episode of the Maroon Strong Show. This is Aaron Jenkins saying thanks for joining us and goodbye.